chronology is a theory validated by astronomical research and statistical analysis of ancient manuscripts that asserts that antiquity and dark ages are phantoms invented in the 16th-18th centuries. Human civilization is barely 1,000 years old. New chronology complies with the most rigid scientific standards. It gives a coherent explanation of what we already know. It is consistent, independent lines of inquiry all lead to the same conclusion. The predictions it makes are confirmed empirically. New chronology goes by the following basic axioms, chronology is the basis of history. Human evolution has always been linear, gradual and irreversible. The cyclic nature of human civilization is a myth. Likewise all the gaps, duplicates, dark ages and renaissances that we know from consensual history are fantasy and hoax. The accumulation of geographical knowledge is reflected in cartography as a gradual and irreversible process. The closer in time is a given manuscript to the events described the less distortions it contains. There is no useless information in authentic ancient sources. Fomenko asserts, there was no such thing as the Tartar and Mongol invasion followed by over two centuries of yoke and slavery, providing a formidable body of documental evidence to prove his assertion. The so-called Tartars and Mongols were the actual ancestors of the modern Russians, living in a trilingual state with Arabic and Turkic spoken as freely as Russian. The ancient Russian state was governed by a double structure of civil and military authorities. The hordes were actually professional armies with a tradition of lifelong conscription the recruitment being the so-called blood tax. Their invasions were punitive operations against the regions that attempted tax evasion. Fomenko proves that official Russian history is a blatant forgery concocted by a host of German scholars brought to Russia by the usurper dynasty of the Romanovs. Their ascension to the throne was the result of conspiracy, so they charged these imported historians with the mission of making Romanov's reign look legitimate. Fomenko proves even the terrible to be a collation of four rulers, no less. They represented the two rival dynasties, the legitimate Godnov rulers and the ambitious Romanov upstarts. As Fomenko blows consensual Russian history to smithereens, he successfully removes a crucial cornerstone from underneath the otherwise impeccable edifice of world history. Fomenko adds insult to injury, wiping out one by one. The ancient Rome. The foundation of Rome in Italy is dated to the 14th century AD. The ancient Greece and its numerous polis which he identifies as the medieval crusader settlements on the territory of Greece. The ancient Egypt. The pyramids of Giza become dated to the 11th to 14th century AD, and identified as the royal cemetery of the global Mongolian Empire, no less. The civilization of the ancient Egypt is irrefutably dated to the 11th to 15th century AD with the aid of the ancient Egyptian horoscopes cut in stone, like enormous dendera horoscope that hangs in main entrance to the Louvre Museum in Paris. He was the first one to decipher and date unambiguously all such horoscopes, coming up with medieval dates in every case. English historians rage at the suggestion that the history of ancient England was de facto a Byzantine import transplanted to the English soil by the fugitive Byzantine nobility. To reward the English historians who consider themselves the true scribes of world history, the cover of the book History, Fiction or Science? Portrays Tintoretto's Jesus Christ crucified on the Big Ben. Fomenko wipes out the ancient history of China outright. No such ancient history. Period. The compilation of the so-called ancient Chinese history is reliably datable to the 17th-18th century only.
it is perfectly recognizable as the ancient European history, reworked and transcribed in hieroglyphs as yet another historical transplantation, this time performed on the Chinese soil by the loving Jesuit hands. The Chinese are the next in line to go berserk. Chinese history is inevitably bound to get both more ancient and more eventful, proportionally to the growing involvement of China in the world affairs. Chinese historians will keep on finding valid proof of prehistoric Chinese space flights until the Politburo orders them otherwise. The Islam with all of its key figures appears as late as 15th-16th century AD as a branch of proto-Christianity. This is amply illustrated by imagery of Prophet Muhammad, Archangel Gabriel, heaven and hell of this period. In today's Islam all imagery of the things living is taboo. Arabic historians may find consolation in the crucial historical role of the Ottoman Empire in the 16th-17th century. The trouble is that this empire was initially a proto-Christian state, with Hagia Sophia identifiable as Temple of Solomon, according to Fomenko. We can only guess if the acquisition of Alexander the Great a Macedonian and a Christian as the founder of the Muslim world empire will make Fomenko's theories more acceptable to the Arabic mainstream. He certainly does not spare any holy cows at all, claiming the stone of Kaaba in Mecca to contain the lost Arch of the Covenant. The history of religions according to Fomenko looks as follows, the pre-Christian period before the 11th century and Jesus Christ, back at Christianity 11th to 12th century, before and after Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ Christianity 12th to 14th century and its subsequent mutations 15th to 17th into Orthodox Christianity, the Catholicism, Protestantism, Islam, Buddhism, and so on. St. Augustine was quite prescient when he said, be wary of mathematicians, particularly when they speak the truth. Henry Ford once said, history is more or less bunk. Prominent mathematician Anatoly Fomenko not only proved it for a fact, but as true scientists tried to upgrade it into a rocket science. Did events and eras such as the crucifixion of Jesus Christ, the Roman Empire, the Dark Ages, and the Renaissance actually occur within a very different chronology from what we've been told? Yes, they certainly did. The history of humankind is both drastically shorter and dramatically different than generally presumed.